Hello, I'm Joe from Arrow. Today we're going to show you how to build the Dingo. The Dingo is a combination storage unit with many drawers behind the two doors, a fold up top lid which can be used for a cutting table. What we're going to start out with is taking our instruction manual. You have a complete inventory of all of the hardware pieces that are going to be found in the hardware box. When you first open it, you will find all of your general hardware in one bag, and there are separate bags within there. Do not mix items from the bag. I do recommend that you uh, begin by doing a count according to the booklet so that you can help identify by count and shape the different screws that are used. We make sure that we use the correct screws to avoid problems. On step one, which we take panel A, which is the top of the cabinet, we will take our cam bolts and insert them along the side of the cabinet. There are two on the left side, two in the center, and two in the right. These go into the smaller holes. The larger ones remain for dowels. Next, we're going to take our ramp and our lock striker, the four D screws and the A screws. There is a difference. The D screw is longer. The D screws install the ramps with the narrow side down in two spots on the front and the A screws will attach the lock striker piece. We have finished this step. We'll go on to the bottom. Now we're going on to step two. If you do not feel that you can turn the cabinet over later on or are working alone, you may want to jump to step 10 and install the casters onto the bottom of bottom panel B using the caster washer and the screw and caster. There are a total of six. On the reverse side of our casters, we have the pre-drilled holes for the six connecting bolts on bottom panel B. Install them as you did top A. This next step, which is three and four, we are going to be pre-installing the drawer runners, hinges, cams, and dowels onto our side panels. The wooden dowels, we suggest using a dab of glue. They are installed into the bottom and top edges, a total of six dowels per side panel. Tap them in with your hammer to make sure they're seated completely. Take your cam with the arrow pointing to the edge of the panel, insert it into the hole fully. There are two cams at the bottom and two cams at the top. Then we will take our blunted screws. Notice there are two different sizes for the drawer runners. We are using the shorter of the two screws. The drawer runners are installed with the wheel down towards the bottom. The screw goes into the second hole. We are installing three runners and we will lastly install our three hinges. They use the larger blunted screw, installing two of them in tight. The middle screw is an adjustment screw and we will deal with that later. Repeat that on your other side panel. The bottom drawer runners are not installed at this point. In step five, we are going to install drawer runners, dowels, and cams onto the right and left sides of the division panel. You do want to do this similarly. One word of note, when you are putting your screws in for the drawer runners, 
they will butt up to each other, so don't drill one side in further than the other. They can always be tightened evenly. Now we're going to install the right and left ends and division onto the bottom piece by sliding the cams down onto the cam bolts and the dowels will fit into the holes. Tighten a good turn to lock the cams in place. As you're doing this, making sure the groove that is the back of the cabinet is the back of the panels. Now we're going to install the back panel onto the back of our dingo cabinet. We have turned it around. One thing I want to point out is you have two sets of three holes at the top and the bottom. The ones that are closer to the edge are the bottom. If you have a white cabinet, you may actually find an arrow. Another thing that's important is the holes will face out so the longer piece is towards the cabinet. This needs to slide in the groove. And a dab of glue can be inserted in that groove as well. Install the top onto the cabinet, lining up our connecting bolts and dowels all the way across. This may take, this definitely takes two people to get it arranged. When the top is fully in place, tighten all of your cams. Take your drawer runners, you will have three remaining, and they will be installed on top of the cams that we just used to connect. There are two in the right hand compartment walls and one on the left because we were able to install one earlier. I like to start these with a handheld screwdriver and again in the second hole get this started and then I will often finish up using my electric screwdriver. Our next pieces are the gate legs G and X. Gather your hardware bag which has the caster brackets and the butt hinges. We have four butt hinges to be installed on the edge with our A screws. Make sure that the raised portion is facing up. We also will install our caster button on the top edge. Just tap it in with a hammer. Place the caster bracket uh, over and around the edge of the panel. You may have to tap it a little bit with your hammer and then install the locking tab casters just by screwing them in. Now we're going to install X and G gate legs into the pre-drilled holes on the back using three A screws per hinge drill, drilling into the pre-drilled holes. 13 we're going to be working on installing the hinge plates onto the doors. There is a countersunk area for the hinge plate to fit into and just screw it down securely. Then install the equalizer to the top of the door and your lock. On the opposite side of the door we're going to glue our keyhole in place and then we can install the handle with the handle bolts. We're going to attach the doors to the cabinet by snapping the two-part hinge from the cabinet side over the door hinge. We're going to begin the assembly of one of the drawers. All of the drawers actually are in, assembled this same way. Your drawer sides have the drawer runners installed on them. On the opposite side you will insert a cam and a dowel on both of your sides. 
These happen to be K and M for the smaller drawers. On the front panel, which is the front of the drawer, install your cam bolt in the smaller hole, leaving the other one open for the wood dowel. Now we will take and attach to the front panel our drawer sides, tightening the cam bolts as we go. Always making sure that the groove for the bottom of the drawer lines up. Now take your drawer bottom end, slide it between the two sides, take the drawer back and fit it on top of the drawer bottom. Take one of your bronze number 4x32 screws and it will screw through the drawer side into the back. Two screws per drawer side and that will finish up the drawers. Continue on all of them. I'm going to show you is how to adjust the doors on your dingo if they don't line up properly, if they're either too high or too low, or if they are too far away from each other when they're closed. I'm going to show you how to adjust it with your hinges here. So, to adjust your hinges vertically and therefore your door vertically up or down, if one door is sitting lower than the other, you can see the screws here, there's, there's three screws that you're going to loosen up, not all the way, but just loosen up enough, and you can raise or lower that hinge, uh, you know, based on what your door needs to raise or lower. So you loosen those up, raise or lower at the necessary height, and then tighten it back up. Now if you have problems with the horizontal adjustment on your door, the tiny little screw here, the more you tighten up that screw, the further away it's going to push the hinge from the panel that it's attached to, and therefore it's going to move the door itself left or right. So for, to adjust it horizontally, you tighten or loosen this screw here.